former Minister of Information, Professor Dora Akunyile, has passed on at the age of 59. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we get to this point, let's go back in time to how it all began. Dora Nkim Edemobi was born on July 14th, 1954, in Makodi Benue State, Nigeria, to Chief and Mrs. Paul Young Edemobi. She grew up on Inaka, Anambra State, a society marked by its rich cultural tapestry and diverse ethnic groups. Dora Kinney's early life laid the foundation for her later accomplishment. Raised in a middle-class family, she developed a strong, keen sense of responsibility. Her educational career went on from graduating with a distinction at St. Patrick Primary School in Sofia, Anambra State, in 1966, to graduating with a Grade 1 distinction at the Rosary Secondary School in Sukar in the year 1973. She also won the Eastern Nigerian Government Post-Primary Scholarship and the Federal Government of Nigeria Undergraduate Scholarship. My secondary education was on scholarship because I had a distinction in my primary school uh, certificate. My university education was on scholarship because I had a distinction for my school certificate. Akuli pursued a degree in pharmacy and graduated in the year 1978 and she had a PhD in the year 1985 from the University of Nigeria in Sukha. And my PhD was of course on scholarship. I was also a graduate assistant. So you can see Nigeria has pampered me all my life. This educational background will serve as a springboard for her future achievements. She in turn became a renowned Nigerian pharmacologist, a professor and a public servant who left an indelible mark on the nation's history. Akuini's professional career began in the pharmaceutical industry where she worked diligently to promote public health and safety from the year 1978 to 1981 at the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital, Enugu. She worked as a graduate assistant at the College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, UNN. Onsuka from 1982 to 1986, climbing up the stairs to becoming a level 1 lecturer in the year 1986 to a senior lecturer in the year 1990, after which she was transferred to the College of Medicine, UNN, in 1992, where she was appointed as a consultant in pharmacology in 1996, up until April 12, 2001. Her commitment to quality control and standards in pharmaceuticals earned her recognition both within Nigeria and internationally. In the year 1996, she became the Zonal Secretary of the Petroleum Trust Fund in Nigeria, showcasing her versatility and dedication to public service in 1998. An amazing woman, right? But if I told you that behind that amazing woman was someone who still felt the pain of the loss of her younger sister who died while Dora Queenly was a graduate assistant in Onsuka, she lost her younger sister too an insulin injection in the year 1988, which was evidently one of her biggest motivations to fight against drug counterfeiters. And my own sister died of counterfeit. She died from counterfeit insulin to infection at the injection site. So it was a very big driving force. In the year 2001, President Obasanjo John needed to appoint a director general for the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NABDA, and obviously her name came up. Although he, the president, had heard about her PTA record prior to this time, according to her, Dora Quinley, it was only three weeks after her introduction to the president that she was called to resume office and get on the job. There were various counter objections claiming the introduction of another Igbo to the health sector. Since the Minister of Health, Professor E.B.C. Umosu was an Igbo man from Anambra State, and Navdak shouldn't be headed by another Igbo from Anambra State. It was also argued that most counterfeit drugs were controlled and produced by Igbos, especially from Onisha and Anambra State. So when President Obasan just uh, insisted on appointing me. Uh, politicians came up with reasons why I should not be appointed. They said, well, this is an Igbo lady. 
the Minister of Health uh, was also is also Igbo, Professor ABC Nwosu, and who are the drug counterfeiters. So they had a very strong reason, I can say. Dora quickly took on the challenge in Vigo, implementing radical reforms and launching a relentless campaign against fake and substandard drugs. So when President Obasanjo looked at all these things and insisted on putting me in that position, I was challenged. It's like I cannot disappoint this man who has trusted me so much. On her resumption to office in April 2001, she declared the eradication of counterfeit drugs and unsafe food a top priority. Under Akwene's leadership, Navdak became a formidable force against counterfeiters. She spearheaded numerous raids, confiscating counterfeit drugs worth millions of dollars. Her efforts not only saved countless lives, but also restored confidence in the Nigerian pharmaceutical industry. Amidst all these praises, she faced intense, scary, and dangerous challenges. In fact, it looked like it was going to be an unending problem because she was a spoiler to the legal businesses of many millionaires who lived luxurious life. They lived like governors and presidents at the detriment of both the less privileged and the middle class. Dora received various death threats. Her son was almost kidnapped. Her family became the only target that these powerful people would pinch on to get to her and make her stop spoiling their businesses. This set of powerful people had the police in their pockets. They also had other arms of government, especially the executive sector. The court would give the close bill within the price range of 10,000 naira to millionaires charged for making huge amounts of money from counterfeiting drugs and more importantly living the life of Nigerians in a quick stand of death. And there stands this woman, of course, with the backing of President Obasanjo, fighting vigorously against multimillionaires who had assassins, policemen, and judges in their pockets. Oh, she was truly a woman king. Dora Aquili was relentless and determined. In fact, in the year 2003, she almost took a bullet to the head, although the bullet grazed her head jail, despite being surrounded by policemen to secure her. They attacked me and shot me from the back. My headscarf was shattered. This is to show how dangerous her job was becoming for her and how mind-blowing she was able to push forward in all this. Her family members were as well moving around with police officers for security reasons. At a point in time, her husband told her to resign until the president gave him a call and encouraged him to keep supporting his wife for the benefits of everyone in the nation. It was President Obasanjo that called my husband and talked to him to support me to go on after five years. Akinli's success in combating counterfeit drugs earned her international acclaim and established her as a symbol of hope in the fight against corruption and public health hazards. But we cannot be afraid to try again, even when we fail. During her first year in office, made in Nigeria drugs were banned all over the world because 70% of drugs in Nigeria around this period with fake drugs. But after three years of working relentlessly, the number reduced from 70% to 16.7%. Wow, that's so amazing. Beyond her accomplishment at NAVDA, Dora quickly ventured into politics, running for public offices. She served as the Federal Minister of Information and Communication from the year 2008 to 2010, bringing her dedication to transparency and accountability to the forefront of Nigerian governance. In the local government, I served in Health Management Board, I served in uh, Advisory Council, Women Commission, I was the coordinator of Better Life for Anambra State. That was how I started my political career. Despite facing challenges and opposition, Dora Kelly remains steadfast in her commitment to serving the people. One which inspired the phrase, good people, great nation. She said this would help promote patriotism among Nigerians. Good people, great nation is an accepted slogan. The slogan was just a driving force. I feel so excited about it. Her legacy extends far beyond her professional achievements. She became a symbol of courage and integrity in Nigeria, inspiring a new generation of leaders. Her impact on public health governance and fight against corruption is immeasurable. In recognition to her contributions, Akoli received 
numerous awards and honors both within Nigeria and internationally, amounting to over 930 awards. Isn't that unbelievable for just one person? She really won battles at different points in time in her life and in the year 2012, she published a book, The War Against Counterfeit Medicine. But little did she know that tragedy was about to strike. On the 13th of July 2013, a strange occurrence happened to Dora Aquinley. While she was preparing to travel to the United States to receive an award the following day, which makes it her 59th birthday, she fell ill, encompassed with a lot of pain and weakness. Hmm. But as a strong woman, which she was, she embarked on the trip to the United States. It was then that she was diagnosed with cancer. She became very ill to the point that everyone thought she would lose her life, which sadly later happened though. Her last public appearance was at the national conference in Abuja in the year 2014 where she was a delegate. Series of pictures flooded the internet and newspapers because she didn't really look like Dindora Akwili. Everyone knew until she mentioned her name when she was about to speak. My name is Professor Dora Akonyele, a delegate from Anambra State. Who would have believed that a woman in form of a king who fought and battled different forms of challenges physically, professionally in her life could have been defeated in this aspect? Wow! Dora Quinley passed on on the 7th of June in the year 2014 in India at the age of 59 years after battling with uterine cancer for two years. Former Minister of Information, Professor Dora Akunyele, has passed on at the age of 59. She was laid to rest in her husband's birthplace in Agulu, Anambra State. On the 28th of August 2014, Dora Nkim Akunyele, a devout Catholic, was survived by her husband, six children, and three grandchildren as at that time. At death was a profound loss to her immediate family, extended families, loved ones, Nigeria and Africa at large. But her legacy lives on in the hearts of those who she inspired and the positive changes she brought about in the nation's history. Dora Kuhini's life is a testament to the transformative power of dedication, integrity and the pursuit of a noble cause. Tragically, on the 28th of September in the year 2000, her husband was killed by some unknown gunmen at Nkwo in the Idemeli North local government area of Anambra State. On his way back from an event to honor his late wife at Sharon Hall, All Saints Cathedral, Onisha, at least seven other people were said to have been killed in that tragic attack on that day. So that is the story of the great icon Dora Unkim Akeli. So let me know in the comment section what you think. I just tell people at the helm of affairs like Dora Queenie today who, despite all odds, are still fighting for a great cause to make Nigeria a better place. Are there still people like that? 